to know the truth on many subjects, whether for noble reasons or simply curiosity. In times past, billions of dollars have been spent sending men to, into outer space for the purposes of finding the truth. They have spent money trying to answer the question, is there life on other planets? Or are we alone? Or is the moon really made out of cheese? Money has been spent to find out the answer to these questions. Time has been spent in searching the truth, even of a deadly disease called cancer. What is the cause of cancer? Can a cure be created? Can this illness be avoided? If we can name the subject, then we can rest assured knowing that man is trying to find the truth about it. Whether it is mathematics or any of the sciences or medicine, nevertheless, even if we find out the truth about any or all of these things, this truth does not contain the power to liberate the souls of men. The truth we must know, the truth that we must accept, and the truth that we must apply is the truth revealed to us by faith. And this truth that Jesus himself bore witness to gives the answer to the mysteries of the soul as well as things unseen. And so there are three points that I would like to bring to your attention on this morning, and the lesson is yours to receive. The first question is, what is truth? That's our first point on this morning. What is truth? The two verses I want us to take a look at is John chapter 14, verse 6, and John chapter 17, verse 17. In John chapter 14, and the verses 6, Jesus is recorded as saying, I am the way the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. This is what Jesus said. He says, I am the way, which means that he is the one and only way. He is the truth. He is the one and only truth. He is the life. He is the one and only life. In order for a person to get to God, they must come through Jesus Christ. But then we must also hear the words of Jesus in his prayer to the Father in John chapter 17, verse 17. In John 17, verse 17, Jesus is recorded as saying, Sanctify them in the truth. Your word is truth. Now by definition, when we look at this word truth, truth is defined as genuine, honest, sincere, actual, reliable, able to be trusted. Truth is actual fact rather than pretense, appearance, or claim. We must understand on this morning that God is the source of truth. And his word is truth. The Bible goes on to tell us that Jesus is called truth. That means that everything he did and everything he said and everything he was was the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. For he is full of truth, according to John chapter 1, verse 14. So when we say truth, we are talking about that which came and was delivered by the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, who is Jesus Christ, our Savior. Listen to your Bible as we go to John chapter 1 and the verse is 17. In John chapter 1 and the verse is 17, the Bible tells us in that verse, for the law was given through Moses, grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. 
So when we look at the scriptures and we see words such as truth or the word of God or the gospel, we must understand that these terms and these words are used interchangeably because it's all the same. Listen to your Bible as we go to Ephesians chapter 1 and the verses are 13 and 14. Ephesians chapter 1 and the verses are 13 and 14. In Ephesians chapter 1, verse 13 and 14, you will find these words. The Apostle Paul writes, In him you also, when you heard the word of truth. Well, what is the word of truth? Keep on reading. He said the word of truth is the gospel of your salvation. And believe in him. We're sealed with the promise Holy Spirit who is the guarantee of our inheritance until we acquire possession of it to the praise of his glory. Therefore, truth is what we can read in the Bible. And all other sources, we must understand, are written by men. And if they are written by men without the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, then we know that it is fallible, it is unreliable and inconsistent at best. So now since we know what the truth is, we now need to be able to answer our second question on this morning. And that question is, what can this truth do for humanity? Why is it that we must know the truth? Why is it that we must preach the truth? Why is it that we must understand the truth? Why is it that the truth must be comprehended? Why is it that we must know what it is? What Jesus tells us in John chapter 8, verses 33 through 36. In John chapter 8, verses 33 through 36, Jesus has already said, you must know the truth. And the truth that you know, the truth that you apply, the truth that you live by, that truth shall set you free. Now we are in John chapter 8, verse 33. We're in John chapter 8, verse 33. The Bible reads, they answered him, we are offspring of Abraham and have never been enslaved to anyone. How is it that you say you will become free? Jesus answered them, truly, truly, I say to you, everyone who commits sin is a slave to sin. The slave does not remain in the house forever. The son remains forever. So if the son sets you free, you will be free indeed. Jesus explains to us in these verses exactly what it is that sin sets us free from, according to the text, this truth will liberate men. Now, when we look at this word liberate, liberate means to set free. My question is, set free from what? Well, when we are liberated by the Christ according to his word, then we are set free from the guilt and service of sin. Not only are we set free from sin, but according to John chapter 17, verse 17, the truth is actually designed to sanctify us. So we must understand on this morning that what sets the Christian apart from the rest of the world is our response to truth. If we reject truth, then we are rejecting God. But if we accept truth and apply it, then we are separated for God's use. And so if man wants to be purified, if man wants to be sanctified, then that man must submit to the truth of God's word, which is the gospel. Listen to your Bible as we go to 1 Peter. The chapter is 1, and the verses are 22 through 25. 1 Peter, the chapter is 1, and the verses are 22 through 25. In 1 Peter chapter 1, beginning with verse 22, the Bible reads, Having purified your souls by your obedience to what? Your obedience to the truth. For a sincere brotherly love, love one another earnestly from a pure heart since you have been born again. 
not of perishable seed, but of imperishable through the living and abiding word of God. For all flesh is like grass and all flower is like the flower of grass. The grass withers and the flower falls, but the word of God remains forever. And this word is the good news that was preached to you. So to purify is to make clean, and it is the truth that cleanses our soul of sin. Unfortunately, my brothers and sisters, we are living in an age in which error is often taught under the guise of truth. And this is the hardest truth to get the religious world to see, and even some of our brethren. The word of God is clear regarding such. When we take a look at 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 3 and 5. In 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 3 and 5, the Bible says, If anyone teaches a different doctrine and does not agree with the sound words of our Lord Jesus Christ and the teaching that accords with godliness, the Bible tells us that that person is puffed up with conceit and understands nothing. He has an unhealthy craving for controversy and for quarrels about words which produce envy and dissension and slander and evil and suspicions and constant friction among people who are depraved in mind and deprived of the truth, imagining that godliness is a means of gain. The Bible tells us that not only are people deprived of truth, but many are ever learning and never able to come to the truth. Listen to your Bible as we go to 2 Timothy chapter 3 and the verses are 1 through 7. In 2 Timothy, the chapter is 3 and the verses are 1 through 7. The Bible reads, but understand this, that in the last days there will come times of difficulty for people will be lovers of self lovers of money, proud, arrogant, abusive, disobedient to their parents, ungrateful, unholy, heartless, unappeasable, slanderous, without self-control, brutal, not loving good, treacherous, reckless, swollen with conceit, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having the appearance of godliness but denying its power. The Bible tells us to avoid such people, for among them are those who creep into households and capture weak women burdened with sins and led astray by various passions, always learning and never able to arrive at a knowledge of the truth. And so when we understand what the Bible tells us in 1 Timothy chapter 6, verses 3 through 5, and John chapter 8, verses 33 through 36, and 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 1 through 17, we must learn to adhere to the commandment given in 1 John chapter 4 and the verses 1. In 1 John chapter 4 and the verses 1, the Bible tells us, Beloved, do not believe every spirit but test the spirits to see whether they are from God. For many false prophets have gone out into the world. If we fail to test these individuals who claim to present God's word, then error will win and truth will not liberate because that truth is unknown, rejected, and never applied. And so I want to close on this morning by giving us our third and final point. And our third and final point is found in 1 Timothy chapter 3, verse 15. Because it's in 1 Timothy chapter 3, verse 15, that our third point is the Christian's responsibility regarding the truth. It's not enough for us to know what truth is and what truth can do. 
but we as children of the Most High God have a responsibility towards the truth and regarding the truth. In 1 Timothy, the chapter is 3, and the verse is 15. The Bible reads, If I delay, you may know how one ought to behave in the household of God, which is the church of the living God, a pillar and buttress of the truth. And so, as members of the Lord's church, we are called upon to support the truth. We must establish it and hold it high for the world to see. Unfortunately, many of us fail to share the truth because of the many negative reactions people have towards it. And we see how truth is responded to even in Scripture. When Stephen stood before the council in Acts chapter 7, proclaiming the truth, they became aggravated, according to Acts chapter 7, verse 54. When Moses stood before Pharaoh proclaiming the truth, the Bible tells us that Janus and Jambres resisted the truth, according to 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 8. In this century, we hear the cries of Christians who no longer desire to hear the truth, and for this reason, they have turned their ears from it, according to 2 Timothy chapter 4 and the verses 4. Many of our brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus have erred from the truth, according to James chapter 5, verse 19. And the people of our day have grown so tired of hearing the truth that now the truth itself is being evil spoken of, according to 2 Peter chapter 2 and the verses 2. Nevertheless, it does not matter how mad a person may get. It does not matter how strong their resistance may be to the message. It does not matter how disinterested a person may be regarding the gospel. It does not matter how far a Christian may have strayed from the faith. It does not matter how derogatory a person may speak about the word of God. The Bible is right. The scriptures are clear. Jesus has told us that we have a mandate to share the implanted word, which is able to save each and every one of their souls, according to James chapter 1, verse 21. So as Christians, we must be clear in presenting the truth, which requires that we talk about its ultimate end. To those who accept it, it will mean salvation to them. Listen to your Bible in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 and the verses 13. In 2 Thessalonians, the chapter is 2 and the verses 13, the Bible reads that we ought always to give thanks to God for you, but brothers beloved by the Lord, because God chose you as the first fruits to be saved through sanctification by the Spirit and belief in the truth. However, this is not the end of those who reject this saving message. Because those that reject the truth, those that reject God, those that reject the word of God, it will mean damnation to them. Hear the words of Jesus in John chapter 12, verse 48. In John chapter 12, and the verse is 48. The Bible reads that the one who rejects me and does not receive my words has a judge. The word that I have spoken will judge him on the last day. And so when we look at this word truth, this word truth is spelled T-R-U-T-H. And what this word truth teaches us about itself is that, number one, truth can be taught. Truth has been taught on today. There is only but one God. He has a son, and his name is Jesus. And God sent his son from glory to earth to die on the cross for each and every one of our sins. He died on a cruel cross called Calvary. Not only that, he was buried in Joseph's new tomb. But our Savior, the Son of God, did not stay dead.
because three days later he conquered death, hell, and the grave and rose from the dead to die never again. And it is this Christ that God has given all authority to, not only in heaven, but also in earth. And it is his word and his example that we must follow, his words that we must adhere to if we want to be saved. This is what is being taught. But truth also reveals. When the truth comes from God's word, not only do we read it, but it also reads us. We may be able to hide a lot of things from one another, but we will never be able to hide things from God, nor will we be able to hide things from ourselves. Because when truth is spoken, it will reveal who we really are. And if we are outside of the covenant of God or we are not in line with God's way of doing things, let us not deceive ourselves. Let us not fool ourselves. The truth has revealed that we are out of alignment and therefore we must be reconciled with God. Truth is also something that can be understood. No one should leave here on this morning saying, well, I would have come forward if I understood what that preacher meant. I may slur my words. My, my impediment may show itself from time to time, but the truth can be understood. You understand in the words of Chris, uh, in the words of Chris Tucker, the words that are coming out of my mouth. You, you know what is being said on today. You know whether you're in Christ or not. You know whether you belong to God or not. You know whether you're a member of his church or not. You know whether you have obeyed the gospel or not. You understand that. So make a wise hearted decision and respond to the truth. And the truth can be trusted. If you do what thus saith the Lord, heaven will be your home. And you can take that to the bank. That can be trusted. You can't trust what some guru tells you. You cannot trust what some man tells you, but you can trust what Jesus has said because you can trust Jesus, which is the ancient truth. You can trust him. Amen. He took away your sins. He paid for that penalty. He took away the penalty that we could not pay. If you put your trust in him, your faith in him, and you obey him, then you have nothing but a glorious future that awaits you. Just obey the truth on this morning, the truth that you heard. Do you believe the truth? If so, the truth has revealed to us that we are in sin, but truth is designed to set us free from sin. So are you willing to repent of your sins so that this truth can set you free? Free. If so, confess the truth that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God. Be baptized. Have your sins washed away on this morning. The Bible tells us that we must be baptized by the authority of deity, according to Matthew chapter 28, verse 19 and 20. That this baptism will forgive us of our sins according to Acts 2.38. That this baptism will wash away our sins according to Acts 22.16. That this baptism will put us into Christ and allow us to put on Christ according to Galatians chapter 3, verse 27. This baptism will put us into the death of Christ and raise us to the newness of life according to Romans chapter 6, verse 3 and 4. This baptism will save according to first peter chapter 3 verse 21 and that is the truth that if we obey the truth god will forgive us of our sins according to acts 238 he'll make us a new creature in christ jesus according to second corinthians chapter 5 verse 17 what kind of creature a creature that not only knows the truth and has the right attitude towards the truth and knows what truth has done for them, but will set forth to live according to that truth. 
and will share that truth with others that they come in contact with so that other people can experience the same deliverance that we have experienced and be able to enjoy the same joy that we have in Christ. And God will add you. You don't have to join. You don't have to find. You don't have to search because God will add you to his church. The only church that you can read about in the scriptures. And that church is the church of Christ. Don't you know that the prophets talked about that church in Isaiah chapter 2 verse 2. We've been studying the book of Daniel. That church is identified in Daniel chapter 2 verse 44. Don't you know that Jesus said he was going to build that church in Matthew 16 verse 18. He actually built that church according to Acts chapter 2 verse 47. This church was so important to Jesus that he died and bled for that church according to Acts chapter 20 verse 28. And his congregations carried that name according to Romans chapter 16 verse 16. Why not become a member of a going church for a coming Lord which does all that the Lord authorizes? But maybe you are a Christian. Has your attitude been consistent with the attitude of those that obey truth? Have you strayed away from the truth? Have you not proclaimed that truth? Have you ignored that truth? Have you not carried out the responsibilities of holding up that truth? This is your time now to actually face the truth. Get back in alignment with the truth and start living and believing that truth once again. According to James chapter 5 verse 16, Acts chapter 8 verse 22, and 1 John chapter 1 verse 9. Make it right on this morning while together we stand and sing the song that has been selected.